Hello, and welcome back. John 16. All this I have told you so that you will not fall away. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are, doing, uh, they are offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asked me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer and about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, but uh, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you all into the tr uh, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly, uh, very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejo uh, rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you. Now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not need, even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe? Jesus replied, A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will uh, leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things, so that, uh, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. May God bless the reading of his word. Okay, so last time I played this game, I was trying to beat the Psychic Gym Leader, and then we came across an, a uh, Pokemon that I wanted to evolve, um, which you can only do not doing that. Um, I have found a method online by which I can evolve this a little more easily than I was proposing at the end of the last stream, so I will be doing that. But it is still an absolute pain. Uh, I've been told by people who have done this thing that it just takes ages, and it's a pain. But, at any rate, we're, we're gonna do that. Second thing. I know it says at the bottom, one game over is five push-ups, and I've been doing that consistently, but yesterday... Yesterday, I did, uh, I got 84 game overs. My arms hurt. Therefore, instead of doing that, I'm going to make tally marks. And, uh, these are just the push-ups that I've owed from yesterday. I've done, um, 
all but uh, 45 of them. But I, yeah, uh, I'm I'm thinking that I'm going to just uh, I'll just make more ta tally marks. When I finally fulfilled them, I'll do it sometime this week. Um, then I'll go back to my normal thing. But my arms are tired. It hurts. I'll be doing less today than I actually am supposed to. Oh, right. There's also mystery gifts going on. I'm going to be making use of those. So, uh, in order to evolve this Pokemon. So, let's see, where was it? In here. OC1C Victor Gavin. Gavin's Palafin gift! Palafin is, uh, the evolution of, um, one of my Pokémon? I forget what it is. Um, but, uh, it evolves via a, uh, an obtuse method. Um, so I'm, I'm perfectly fine with having this and sticking it into the rotation. In, in place of what it's of, uh, the evolution of. Depending on its level. I don't know what level it is. It evolves at level 38, um, while Union Circle is evolved, uh, uh, around? Okay, so we have Palafin, Dolphin Pokemon. This is Zero Form. It's, uh, yeah, Finizen. That's what we got. Its physical capabilities are no different than, uh, than a Finizen's, but when its allies are in danger, it transforms and powers itself up. Yeah, so that evolves from Finizen. This is very important, this one right here. Fur candies! I got 10 rare candies! Yay! Max Revives Gift! You got five Max Revives! Yay! We're not gonna use those as much as the Rare Candies. Rare Candies are gonna be really nice, especially for what I'm trying to do. And then... Catch my Ball! Five net balls, five dive balls, five dusk balls, five timer balls, five quick balls, and five luxury balls. Both of those things that I just did, it said that it's active until October, so, uh, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice for people not presently playing the game. At any rate, I need to evolve Relor, so... Not right here. Need to see my Relor. There it is. Yeah, so only the Relor has to move. I don't. Here we go. So the Relor has to get a thousand steps, and I basically just have to sit here and wait for it to do that.
This trick is supposed to work so that it gets a thousand steps just going in circles for three minutes, but uh, it's not it's not continuing to do so. It goes in circles a little bit, and then it just stops. Helps some, but... I think I might just have to run around town. That's okay. I can do that. The point, though, is that it cannot get back into its ball. So... But yeah, and then it has to level up. Doesn't have to be in a battle, but it has to level up, and it can't go into its ball. Um, so I can't, like, face a trainer or anything. So... I'm going to just walk very slowly across town. Because it can't go back in its ball. And then when I get across town, I'm going to... Uh, use a rare candy and hope that it hit a thousand steps. If not, well, that's why I have ten rare candies. I only have to do this three times, so hopefully at least one in three is good. Yes! That's one! And I'm gonna have to put in this data. But I didn't want to look up what it looks like, so... That looks nice. Rabska. And it's level 34. And now let's finally see what the Pokedex says. Because <laughs> I've put in all of that stuff. Rabska, rolling Pokemon. An infant sleeps inside the ball. Rabska rolls the ball soothingly with its legs to ensure the infant sleeps comfortably. Okay. And it's learning Revival Blessing. Huh. Okay, what's that do? The user bestows a lovely blessing, reviving a party uh, Pokemon that has fainted and restoring half that Pokemon's max HP. Wait, what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can see it only has one PP, but... I didn't know this was possible. <laughs> it's a revive in a Pokemon move. <laughs> Put it over takedown. Kind of thinks it's at the front of my party now, but uh, wow! And it's a special attacker, so I'm gonna need to change its moves. I suppose you're right. Okay, I'll get things moving here on my end. Let's keep the tagline simple. Naturally beautiful. In order the new eyeshadow color too, would you? Thanks, you're a doll. Gotta run now. Chat with you later. Hello there. I'm Tulip, the gym leader here. Now I must tell you that being a makeup artist is my main line of work. Dendra had nothing but praise for you. She said you totally slayed out there. <laughs> I must say, you are a cute challenger, uh, challenger, Emily. I'm sure my ESP exercise made you all the more beautiful. Doesn't that make you happy? You keep your Pokémon beautiful and clean as well. I see you have quite the aesthetic sense. Appearance is equally important for both people and Pokémon. Makeup is like magic. Anyone can use it to change their appearance. Allow me to put my skills to use to make your cute little Pokemon even more beautiful. As she beats them into the ground.
You're quite a good base to test my makeup magic on. What shall I use on you? You're just as hard to get rid of as caked on mascara, I see. I need a good makeup remover. Come here, my little Florges. It's time for a makeover. You'll become a new you! Now she can see my type is dark, unlike before. But yeah, I knew that she had Moonblast and she was prone to use it. I was just hoping I could at least have one turn where I could use uh, something on her, but I guess not. She did it. Uh, let's see. We'll go with Crunch. Aha.
And Gyarados got a level. You think of a level. Oops, if you spell it right. Okay. Keep turning. Okay, so, uh, Waterfall, I think, is gonna do more than Crunch at this point. Because of the rain. Got another level. Uh, no. Be current. do about the same. Okay, fine. We'll do Waterfall. I think I won! Yes! Finally! Oh my goodness, I've been doing this for so long! <laughs> we beat her! Yes! Cupid got a level. Oh my goodness! I've been doing this for so long! Strength has a magic to it that cannot be washed away. And Cupid's evolving. Technically, it evolves a level 34, so that's actually not uh, not far off. Okay. BST is now 500. Copperacha! Copperderm Pokemon. Copperacha are prideful, cantankerous Pokemon. Specimens with vibrant green skin command the respect of others of their kind. Heavy Slam. Uh, sure, we'll take it over Iron Defense. Lost the battle? And your beauty rivals even my own? I can't believe it. 
You are quite splendid. Yes, truly amazing. Perhaps I should take you under my wing before you make your big break elsewhere. But I suppose I need to work on myself a little more first before I run off and do such a thing. You have earned my gym badge. Allow me to strike one of my best poses and uh, to give it to you. Congratulations, Emily. I've been working on this for three streams! Four streams, actually, wasn't it? Yeah, four streams. Woohee! With six gym badges, Pokemon of up to level 50 will be easier to catch, and will listen to the commands you give them. That's every single Pokemon I have! Yes! <laughs> if you train hard, you'll be able to use this move in a totally perfect way. Psychic. Okay. Don't go uploading that selfie we just took to social media, okay? Uh, I'm gonna be sticking it on YouTube later. <laughs> I think my makeup has run a little- uh, has run a little with all the moving and sweating I did during our battle. And the rain. <sighs> I need to fix it fast before my next appointment. My schedule is absolutely packed, you know. Farewell, then. You did splendidly today. Finally! I'm gonna have a lot lower of a, uh of a rate of, um, losing battles for a while now. We've got two gems left. Two titans and two crews. Greetings once more, Emily. I was watching your battle with gym leader from, uh, with the gym leader from the sidelines, and I must say, I thought it was simply excellent! Full marks! Gold star! Extra credit, even! Hardly had you sent out Deerling before you launched into your strategy! Yeah, that's totally... whatever. That unrelenting offensive! That flurry of attacks! What an efficient way to quarter the opponent! And what artfully trained Pokémon! Such a vibrant palette of moves! Ah, I do beg your pardon. I didn't mean to let my emotions run amok like that. Ahem. In summary, I simply wanted to say that you seem to have gotten even stronger. I must admit I'm eager for you to gather all the gym, battle uh, uh, gym badges. As a member of the Elite Four, I await the day you come to face me with great anticipation. Oh, but one thing. Don't let your studies fall by the wayside. Be sure to come to the Academy now and then. Yep, I was just about to do that. Because we finally can. <sighs> finally! Finally! Oh my goodness. Alright, so we're doing art now. You'd like art with Mr. Hassel. How appropriate. Yes. Hassel again soon. Don't be tardy. Greetings, I am Hassel. I will be teaching this art class. It is a pleasure to meet you all. Now, let me be candid for one moment. I imagine that many of you will forget all you all that you learned in this class once you graduate. We've got a Gyarados, an Eevee, a uh, Fan P, the Den, Ditto, and Cacnea be behind him. After all, you don't need even a basic understanding of artwork, much less a refined appreciation of beauty for most exams or jobs. 
So is my class a waste of time for you, then? I think not. At least, I certainly hope it isn't. Think for a moment, all of you. What is beauty, anyway? What makes something beautiful? The eye of the beholder. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. That's the, uh, that's the common phrase. Interesting. Thank you, Emily. Oh, I don't mean to suggest there's a correct answer to my query. The important thing is that you all take time to think about it. Think about why we might find beauty in a flower blooming on the side of the road, for example. <clears throat> Question why the sky is a different shade of blue than the ocean, or why the leaves change color. Ponder the windmills of Artisan and how they move. Contemplate the chilling bite of the waters of Cascaratha. I'm sure you will find that every little detail of your lives will seem more vivid, more impactful, if you just take a moment to stop and think. And I am certain that if you stop and truly appreciate the little beauties of this world, it will help you pull through the days where your studies have you exhausted, or when work has dampened your spirits. Ah, do pardon me for waxing philosophical. You don't need to understand all of that now. To put it simply, it is true that one doesn't need art to survive, but it certainly makes surviving much more enjoyable. It is my hope that this class will add even a little bit of color to your lives. That's all for today. Next time, we'll, we'll try a more hands-on approach to appreciating beauty. Hello class, it is I, Hassel, yet again. In our previous class, we discussed what beauty is, which might have been a little boring for you. So today I thought I would mix things up a little to pique your interest in art. Allow me to introduce our special guest. Gibble! This is Professor Gibble, the assistant lecturer for today. Now then, Professor Gibble, if you would be so kind as to terrestrialize for us. Grass type, huh? As some of you may already know, a Pokemon can terrestrialize if you use a Terra Orb. Normally, Professor Gibble would be of the Dragon type, but by terrestrializing, it succeeded in uh, in changing its type. Dragon Ground, actually. So, class, what type do these lovely glistening flowers above Professor Gibble's head represent? Grass type. Excellent, Emily. Full marks for you. These beautiful flowers blooming above Professor Gibble's head show that it has now become a grass type. The shape of a Terra Jewel above a Pokémon's head depends on the Pokémon's Terra type. To summarize, if an opponent's Pokémon terrestrializes during battle, observe a Pokémon's Terra Jewel closely to see which type it has become, and choose effective moves accordingly. It is my sincere hope that today's lecture will help all you all achieve beautiful victories. The, ter uh, the, the terrestrial phenomenon is indeed a fa fascinating and deep subject to discuss. That is it for today, class. Thank you, Professor Gibble, for your help. Hello, class. It is I, Hassel, yet again. I've been told that my previous lecture about the terrestrial phenomenon was very well received. Thank you all for your kind words. In fact, Ms. Dendro specifically requested that I impart even more battle knowledge to my students. So I've decided that today we will take another look at how a Pokémon can terrestrialize. And of course, here is Professor Gibble to help us. Now then, Professor Gibble, if you would be so kind as to terrestrialize for us... That's Ice-type. Now, what do we have here? Last class we saw Grass-types terrestrializing, but this time we have something of a different shape. Observe a Terra Jewel resembling a snowflake. Its dendritic sh uh, shape is stunning to behold. It's a little chilly standing so close to it. So class, what Terra type do you imagine this jewel might represent? Ice. I don't know why you would... Uh, I suppose Ghost... Uh, 
might match some of what he just said, but I can't imagine whatever. <laughs> it's ice. Excellent, Emily. Full marks for you. The reason there's a snowflake shining above Professor Gibble's head is simple. It is now an ice type. And because Professor Gibble is currently the ice type, ice type moves would not be very effective against it. Keep in mind, usually they would deal quadruple damage to, uh, to Gibble. Because it's dragon ground. Now here's some trivia about snowflakes. While snowflakes come in many different shapes and sizes, most are classified as hexagons. Just think of it, snowflakes fall from the sky taking similar shapes without anyone saying they must. Do you not feel the great mystery of nature? The beautiful enigma we live in. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is a bit of a tangent, but Mis uh, Mr. Jacques' glasses are also hexagonal, aren't they? I almost forgot to mention that you can change a Pokémon's Terra-type at the Treasure Eatery lo uh, located in Medelli. Though I must say the cook there is a little prickly. You'll need to get on her good side if you want her help. Now, come prepared for next class because it is time for your midterm examination. Thank you for today, Professor Gibble. I do hope you're all ready because it is time for your midterm exam. Focus and do your best. And begin! What is the name of the gemstone that uh, glows over a Pokemon's head when it terrestrializes? Terra Jewel. When the answer to question one is the in the shape of flowers, what type does it represent? Grass type. What shapes are most snowflakes classified as? Hexagon. Where is the eatery that allows you to change a Terra type? Badali. What makes something beautiful? There's no correct answer. Time's up. That's it for today's test. Pencil sound, please. I would rather not have students worry about passing or failing art, <laughs> passing or failing in my art class. But tests are tests, after all. Anyway, good work, everyone. You can check your results at the, <laughs> at the front desk. I'm so worried. Child, how long are, uh, out all on your own? Why, you have me worried sick! I've got to get you back to town! Eric the Worker. As a Raichu! Oh, this is a wonderful start. And it's level 43. Yay. Yeah, it's changed already. We can see its hero form there just a little bit. It's taller than the card. Haha. <sighs> <laughs> So in competitive, Focus Blast is known as Focus Miss. You saw just uh, you saw why just now. <laughs> Eevee got a level. Uh, which Eevee is this? Run away. And it was level 30, it is now level 31. It's just gonna make it... Well, it doesn't particularly matter, but I now have two Eevees that are level 31 with run away. <laughs>
That has levitate. Uh, we'll go with... Strength. Ow. You can't use any ground type moves on it because it has levitate. But I was dumb. It's level 25. What did I think it's going to be able to get done? Whatever. Strength. Ow! Man, this thing is tough. Alright, you know what, Palafin, it's your turn. I know it's electric type, but... Heroic transformation. What does it look like? Ah. That is quite different. I'll go with Wave Crash. Goodbye. Let's endure God level. Luxray. Oh my goodness, what's with all of the <laughs> electric types? Actually, because of that, we're gonna flip turn. If you're that strong, I suppose I needn't worry. Watch out for dangerous Pokémon and strange people, okay? It's nighttime. Aha! Woo! We got a Dratini, finally! Dratini, Dragon Pokemon. It is born large to start with. It repeatedly sheds its skin as it steadily grows longer. Dynamo, Elephish Pokemon. These Pokemon move in schools. They have they have an electricity generating organ, so they discharge electricity if in danger. The 
Modified Dawn fan. Hello, Emily. This is Professor Turo. Iron Treads is a Pokemon that came from the great crater of Paldea. I ask that you do whatever is needed to subdue it for me, with all due caution, of course. Iron Treads, the Quaking Earth Titan. Ow. Hey, it's burned! That's gonna help. Oh, wow. Okay. It must be ground type. It's eating something. Looks like you found yourself a Titan. Wait, that's the Quaking Earth Titan? Uh, is, is that thing even a Pokemon? I must be trying to get pumped up with that little snack. Time to show that thing what you and me can do, Emily. Turn. He's got a skill villain. I'm gonna use the skill villain I taught nearby to seize a real spicy victory. This is gonna burn. And it got burned again. <laughs> and it flinched. Man, this thing can't catch a break. Titan Iron Treads. Ooh, Eevee and Giraffe Rig both got levels. It hit level 30, so that was my adaptability Eevee. And then Giraffe Rig. One of these is going to have to become a Sylveon. I don't have one. Put it over Quick Attack. Double hit. Sure. Uh... Over agility. Yes! Nice going, little buddy. What even was that thing, though? I kind of feel like maybe I've seen it before somewhere. Anyway, 
I bet if we head inside here, we'll find more of that Urban Mystica I was eating. Let's give the place a once-over before that thing decides to come back. Come out, come out, wherever you are! Yes! Found it! Here's a little herb. A sour herb of Mystica. The sheep! The sheen! It looks like it'll taste horrible, which means it's gotta be good for you! Now then, let's see. What does the book have to say? Okay, Sour Herba Mystica is chock full of nutrients and is great for boosting your overall health. It says here it works wonders whether you're tired physically or mentally. Perks you right up! No time to waste. Let's get some food going! Sorry for the wait. Here's a super healthy sandwich that'll perk you right up once you eat it. Plus, as a token of our friendship, here's another Titan badge. Gaze upon it in awe as you eat. I probably could have done this one a while ago. <laughs> Come on out, Mavisif. Food's up. Oh, ho, ho! Would you look at that? Seems like someone's got a proper appetite now. Rhydon will be able to glide now! Whoa, seems like that fellow's also slowly regaining its original strength. Still, doesn't look like it's anywhere close to returning to its battle form. Seems healthy enough physically. Maybe it's got some kind of mental block that's preventing it from returning to its true form? What do you mean? I've read about it in books before. A mental scar, like a psychological trauma, you know? I think that's what you call it. Maybe it had a terrifying experience in battle, so now it's scared to battle at all? Well, don't worry. I'm sure both that brute and Mabostiff uh, will make a full recovery eventually. So how do you feel, Mabostiff? How's that Urban Mystica working? Yeah, uh, no pressure. Not like it's fair to expect every kind of Urban Mystica to have some huge effect, right? And it's not like the effect has to be immediate, either. Hey, it's okay, don't worry. Emily and I are gonna make sure you're right as rain. We've got one more herb to go, and I bet it's the best of them all. It's... it's just gotta be. Alright, Emily. The next stop on our little herb hunt should be the last. But we can't lose steam until we're done. Let's keep up our momentum. Here we go! Hello, Emily. This is Turo. I detect that Maridon has regained more of its original power. After it has jumped into the air, you should try pressing the B button again. It should glide now. Pressing the B button while you're in the air, uh, 
Press the B button while you're in the air, and the Rhinon will now glide for you. If you press the B button once more, you'll stop gliding and immediately start falling. You must continue helping Mariadon recover. Let's check it out. So I do lose height as I'm doing it. But it's not terrible either. Let's see how fast it'll do that. Okay, it's not going very far on this glide. <laughs> That's okay. Well, we got another badge, so you know what that means. Home Ek. You'd like Home Ek with Mr. Saguara. Yes. That's what we begin soon. Don't be tardy. I see we have some energetic young ones in our class this time around. You may call me Mr. Saguaro. Your time here will be uh, here with me will be spent obtaining knowledge and skills indispensable for daily life. Many of you have left the care of your parents to live here in your own uh, on your own in the academy dormitory. I pray that the knowledge I impart to you will be uh, will improve the quality of your lives and the necessities thereof: food, clothing, and shelter. Of those three categories, I assume the most pressing and interesting for you all is food. When you eat sandwiches on your picnics, the HP of your party Pokémon will be restored. You will also gain something called Meal Powers, which can provide all manner of benefits. For example, these powers can make Pokémon easier to catch, or increase the experience points that your Pokémon receive. I think you will also find that the breadth of these effects can be expanded by crafting sandwiches of superb flavor. What's more, there is a certain something that uh, that is particularly important if we wish to receive meal powers with even more helpful effects. Let me see. Miss Emily, tell me, what must you keep in mind to receive even more helpful meal powers? I have no idea. Uh, let's see. Choice of failing the comments? Perfectly correct, Miss Emily. Perhaps you were already aware of this fact from having helped your family with cooking at home? Your choice of ingredients, including both fillings and condiments, is an important factor in gaining even more helpful meal powers. For example, using sweet ingredients in your sandwiches may help you gain egg power. Including numerous bitter ingredients, on the other hand, can help you, uh, can gain you item drop power. Learning to aim for specific effects when crafting sandwiches will almost certainly make your culinary endeavors more enjoyable. Please be aware, however, that you can also receive meal powers by eating re at restaurants. I must say that I would feel the utmost joy if you all learned much here in my class and came to better understand home economics. Our time together has come to an end for today. I bid you all farewell. Put away your phones. It is time to begin class. In our last class, I believe we talked about the effects you can get from food on your picnics. You can receive meal powers and even restore HP for all the Pokémon in your party. It is a truly convenient means of healing your Pokémon. Unfortunately, as I'm sure you are aware, it is not suited for use in battles, when you cannot make food, or when you wish to restore HP quickly. In times such as those, you should make use of healing items, such as potions, which you can purchase from Pokémarts or the school store. Healing items are immediately effective and can be used any time that, uh, that you can open your bag. They are, however, consumed after one use. Potions restore 20 HP, Super Potions restore 60 HP, and Hyper Potions restore 120 HP. The pricier the item, the more HP it will restore. Keep in mind how much money you have when you are stocking up on these items. However, unforeseen happenings are an inextricable part of traveling from place to place. Imagine, if you will, the following scenario. You find yourself with injured Pokémon, but you have no potions, you are out of sandwich ingredients, and there are no Pokémon centers nearby. Tell me, Miss Emily, what should you search for when in a perilous situation uh, with no way to heal your Pokémon? Items on the ground. 
Perfectly correct, Miss Emily. I see you are well learned in uh, survival techniques. I have so many more potions than I know what to do with because of just picking them all off the ground. I haven't bought any at all. <laughs> if you see something shiny on the ground, it is actually an item that has been dropped there. You may be able to find a restorative item, such as an orange berry or a potion this in this way. You can use the R button to send out your Pokemon to pick up such items as well. And then there are berries, of course. Berries, by the way, aren't like items from shops. If you let your Pokemon hold one, it will decide on its own when to eat the, <laughs> eat the berry during battle. Letting your Pokemon decide this timing for itself can be quite interesting. At any rate, if you find yourself in need of healing, I suggest that you look around for shiny items on the ground. If you can't find such items, there are other me <laughs> methods you you may employ for healing your... Uh, but I see the bell demands that topic wait. Our time together has come to an end for today. I bid you all farewell. Put away your phones. It is time to begin class. In my last class, I taught about HP restoration. However, after class, I was asked by several of you about power points, commonly known as PP. When a Pokémon loses all of its HP, it faints and can no longer rattle. What then happens to a Pokémon when it loses all of its PP? Can't use moves. Well, except struggle, but you know. Perfectly correct, Miss Emily. Perhaps you know this from first-hand experience? Yes, on my metronome run. Struggle. <laughs> but also from many other times as well. When a Pokémon runs out of PP, it can no longer use its moves. However, each move has its own store of PP, so you can mitigate PP loss by using a variety of moves rather than just one move repeatedly. If a Pokémon loses all PP for all of its moves, it will only be able to use Struggle an action that also damages the Pokémon that uses it, by one quarter of its health. In order to avoid this predicament, PP can be restored at Pokémon Centers along with HP. Items such as Ethers and Max Ethers can also be used to restore PP. Be careful not to confuse potions with Ethers in the heat of battle. However, Ethers are not sold at shops, so you should use them judiciously if you find them. The stronger the move, the lower its maximum PP. Do not waste uses of these moves unless you wish to quickly run out of PP. It is important to find a balance in a Pokémon's set of moves. As you can see, HP isn't the only thing you must keep an, uh, an eye on while adventuring with Pokémon. I hope that you will all take care to ensure that your partner Pokémon can perform at their best as you in each engage in the treasure hunt. Our time together has come to an end for today. Our next meeting will be an examination day. Be sure to review well in preparation. The time has come to test how well you all have learned here in my class. Let's begin before the information simmering in your brains from a last-minute cram session fades. Which is not an effect of a picnic meal. Increasing speed. Which of the following affects the kinds of meal powers received from a particular meal? Means economists. Which of these berries can restore Pokémon's HP? Orin. Leandro wanted his Pokémon to decide on its own when to use it, its item in battle, so he gave it an Orin Berry. This will work as he hopes. And technically true. If a move runs out of PP, it can no longer be used. If a Pokémon runs out of PP for all its moves, it can only sit there in frustration. False. Time for answering questions has come to an end. Please stop writing. I hope you all uh, you were all able to give the examination everything you had. Please remember to ask for your scores at the front desk before leaving for the day. <clears throat> what is art? I I don't even know anymore. Carolina the artist. As a florgis. Hit level 51. Whatever. Uh. 
I don't have anything particularly effective, so... Fire Orb. It's a special wall. I should have known that. Okay. I've used the floor just before. That's why I should have known that. Uh, Eevee and Giraffe both got levels. All of my Eevee are now level 31. Roxish. On you. Uh, let's see. Then I have to keep in mind the level of my Pokémon. Fine. level. Uh, level 28. Oh, I totally forgot to check. Okay, Grim Snarl. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, I wouldn't have done particularly well with any of my Pokemon anyway. Let me wait, Crash. And I got a level on everything, except Palfin. And last mo move of yours was pure art. I feel motivation welling up inside me. Cheers for the battle! Okay, Palfin is carrying my team, and I'm not sad about it. Alright. Ah! Ah! Achoo! Um, that was my battle cry. Mark the student. So I'm gonna see if I can add maybe. So I'm watching another stream on my right, right? That's where this chat comes from. Um, but I'm going to see if I can get window capture. Um. That one. There we go. So, it's gonna... Uh, yeah, this is what I'm watching. But I want to put it... Um... Move it down. It goes below the capture card.
I had space, so I figured I may as well put it there. Palfin got a level. Now you can also see what I'm doing when I do this. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing has- oh, I didn't even- why did I not lose speed? Oh, because it had- okay. It has sheer force. Colossal! Yeah, I'll switch. Uh, Palpin. Down it goes. Oh, that's okay. I can heal that. I'll heal status conditions, I just won't give more HP or anything. Okay, we got... I'll do that after the battle. Shoo! Evolving. It should be Sylveon. Yep. Because it has a fairy type move. That's the prerequisite. It has to be fairy type. And if it has fairy type, it locks it to Sylveon. Sylveon! Intertwining Pokemon! Sylveon cuts an elegant figure as it dances lightly around, feelers fluttering, but it pierces uh, but its piercing moves aim straight for its opponent's weak spots. Still need yeah, okay. And then disarming voice. Yes. Better than baby doll eyes. I'm trying to get to, to the Glossy Auto Gym, but boy is it cold here! Nope! Nope! Glide. That's how you get there. Black steak.
If you can defeat me, I'll tell the Academy's big secret. Final the student. Thirty-seven. Oh, okay. Acrobatics. Reaver got a level. Rest. Um, uh, maybe. Nope. Flat, sir. Weird to be giving Claude's her sword stance because most of its moves that are uh, that are affected by its ability are special. I guess I've got no choice but to spill the beans. The Academy has ha, had some kind of big bro, uh, bro ha ha back when I first enrolled. All the teachers at the time quit. The teachers we've got now were all hired after that. Huh. The backpacker's only weakness is steel type moves. Why? Backpacker Nil has a leafy on. Okay. Acrobatics. Levels for Giraffe Rig and Griever. Twin Beam. Uh, yes. That's a new move. The user shoots mystical beams from its eyes to inflict damage. The target is hit twice in a row. Huh. Okay. For a giraffe. Sylvia. Oh. 
Cool. Elephant and Greaverd. Darn, you saw through my lie? Yeah, I noticed. None of your Pokemon were weak to steal. Oh! Oh! You teach a twin beam and that's how it evolves. Okay. Let's go ahead and put in my levels first and then we're going to have a fun time with that. Giraffe, long neck Pokemon. The hardened head from the tail pr uh, protects the head of the main body as Ferrigiraffe whips its long neck around to headbutt enemies. My real weakness is reality type moves. I just want to get away from reality. Ahaha. <laughs> uh. Talk to me. Hey, you talked to me. Thanks. Now let's battle! Hiker Estella. As a Whiskash. Or just got a level. Wow, you're bold. I guess you wouldn't have come talk to me if you weren't confident in your battle skills. Was level 48 and it has snow warning and something got a level and I didn't see what. Snover, frost tree Pokemon. Seemingly curious about people, they gather around footsteps they find on snowy uh, uh, snowy mountains. And for it, I've got a level. Okay. Silly Bird, delivery Pokemon. It always carries its food with it wherever it goes. If attacked, it throws its food at the opponent. Trigonal, crystallizing Pokemon. Trigonal uses its chains of ice to constrict its opponents and then flash freezes them where they stand. You have to be careful. There's no shortage of strong trainers in these parts. I noticed. Anna the Dragon Tamer. As a Dragonair.
gotta say that did quite a lot considering it's it was in zero form and it was not very effective. Oh, it has pickup. All right, gotta check that more often. Reaver got a level. Crunch. Sure. Here to bite. I suppose none of the other trainers were as strong as you. A weak trainer could never make it up here. I apologize for judging you prematurely. Sup! Wild Bull Transport at your service. Let's say we have a quick battle. Martin the Courier. As a Tauros. Goodbye. Level 4 Florgis. And that's it. Er, guess I wasn't wild enough. Wild Bull Transport has Tauros as our mascot. Need goods delivered? Our Tauros strength muscles will get it there. Glossio Mountain has such nice fresh air. I can sing so well up here. Julia the Musician. Toxtricity, huh? Okay. Quit turn. Pyroar, Ferrigiraffe, and Cyclozar. Crunch! Uh, I'll take that over Endeavor. That's all from me, me, me! Oh, I struck that note beautifully! I might cause an avalanche if I sing too loudly, huh? 
Point snow all around. I crossed paths with a school kid. Ah, I can't come up with the last line. Maybe you should go ask the musician. Biker Nancy. Has a Sandaconda. Bitter defeat. I came here to compose ha uh, haiku, but only wintry verses are springing, in uh, springing to mind. It's kind of embarrassing bumping into your schoolmates outside of school, huh? Alma the student. As a bonnet. Got a level. Glaceon. I still need to get one of those. Just got a level. I lost. Now I'm even more embarrassed. I hate running into people I know when I'm out and about. It's weird, I know. Hackers are great! So strong and free and cool! Janet the student. That's an espion. That does literally nothing on the very first turn, unless someone had insurance uh, or sorry, um, intimidate or something. I guess. Intimidator download would make it do something. Plus, he got a level. Umbreon. Similarly, Guard Swap does nothing at the start. Whatever. and Cyclozar got levels. Which 
Shift year. Sure. The user rotates its gears, boosting its attack stat and sharply boosting its speed stat. <laughs> speed stat. Better than Shugtail. Being strong and free is tough. Mountains are dangerous, huh? Maybe I'll head to the forest instead. Ah, oh, those are lag zones. Have to check its ability, and we also got levels. Heal pulse. Uh, it's only useful in uh, double battles. Okay. Indeedy, emotion Pokemon. This Pokemon never leaves its trainer's side. It predicts their actions with its psychic power and takes care of their day-to-day -day needs. Emotion Pokemon, female. In search of happy feelings, such as joy and gratitude, Indeed bustles around, taking diligent care of people and other Pokemon. One of Team Star's bases is off to the east of here. So scary! Ale <laughs> Aleix the student. As level what? Lockix level... Forty-nine! Yeah, I think it's time to head back and go the other way. Ow! I think it's fighting type. It's not by any U turn super effective. That would be Dark type. It's Dark type. Bug Dark. Okay. Flame. Yes, I'll switch. Uh, let's see. I don't really have anything fantastic against it, but I do have my, uh, Cyclozar.
Now I pretty much just have to hit it once. The problem is doing that. So. You could do that too. Thanks for handing me the win. Because <laughs> if you just use Aerial Ace again, I, <laughs> I don't know what I do. Oh, come on! Never mind. And then it's not the confusion. No! I was so close and then Blissey missed! I don't have anything else that's going to beat it. Faint. It's a priority move. Yes! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that was close. Metatite and Gallade got levels. Power trick. I guess if I was as strong as you, I wouldn't need to be scared, even of Team Star. Honestly, you are stronger than me, sir. <laughs> Team Star's fighting crew has a base off to the east of here, and their boss is super scary. That grim look she's always got. Brr. I don't think that's happening until I actually get, uh, whatever the fifth level is here. Oh, yeah, look. It suddenly turns way down if you ch start trying to fly too far. I'm moving down way faster than I am forward. Okay. Well, that limits things. But at least I got this black steak here. Oh, and there's a trainer, too. So ridiculous. I was doing the snow soap runner in Glossy Out of Mountain and ended up here. Where the heck is here anyway? <laughs> A long way from your target, I can tell you that. Naya the student. Lurantis. And it's level 50. Okay. Double not very effective.
why he's toxic. and Rylu got levels. Whoa, your Pokemon are ridiculously strong! Wasn't actually planning to come here, but this ended up pretty fun too. Huh. So we're going to end off here. When we come back next time... Let's save first. When I come back next time, we will be heading up the mountain. Yay! Progress! Woohoo! <laughs> Anyway, that's going to be all for today, so thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.